to I'm gonna work on a Charleston freezer here, a three-door freezer with the Intellitrol. Right now the display is saying it's supposed to be a defrost. As you can see the unit's running in here. We got our little smart probes here we're gonna hook up in our app. Thought I'd show you guys how to zero out the smart probes. Go to setting, zero pressure sensor. Zero the pressure sensors. Confirm, continue. Oops. I keep hitting the wrong button. Okay, continue. And that's how you zero out your pressure sensors. All right, let's get these things hooked up and see what we're doing. Okay, so I got my temperature probe hooked up. I just put it in the box and it's pulling it down now. Um, here's a look at the app for the smart probes. So I'm a minus 12 evaporator. And it, it, it was in defrost when I got here and it kicked out. 102 condensing. Uh, my ambient, you can see it's cloudy out. It's a... Uh, low 60s right now so the pressures are looking good I got it I got a good charge my TXV is feeding we'll, we'll check the superheat here in a second I'll go get the temperature probe and my box is pulling down so I'll show you this here so this is what's cool with the smart probes or even the Bluetooth uh, 550s it's really tight working in there that's where I'm working between the fence and the fridge. Now what's cool with the DL429 is you can also do this. I can go home. I got the smart probes hooked up. Now I can cycle apps. And I can get my temperature here. Okay, now I cycled apps. So now I got my temperature probe. Which is off, coming off the UEI to my tablet. Okay, so we've been running for a bit. We're almost at a minus 20 evaporator, which would be ideal. Really close. Head pressure looks great. 254 for R404A. The temperature is 23 and falling. So the call I had was this freezer was froze up. And it was at 40 degrees. Okay, there's a view. Now that's going to be a superheat reading of compressor superheat. My evaporator temperature is almost at minus 20 where I want it. 102 condensing. Charge is good to me. Now, I only have one temperature probe. I'll switch it over here. We'll see what the subcooling looks like. And it's really easy to do. Edit view. access to your evaporator section. You'll have two evaporator fan motors. Some of the newer ones will have a blower type motor. And with this Intellitrol, you get a cabinet sensor down here. It's reading the cabinet temp right there. And then you got your evaporator sensor. Nine times out of ten, this sensor goes bad. This is the sensor that tells it to go in defrost and out of defrost. There's our TXV, Sporlin. I think it's 10 or 11 years old. Okay, so the coil got cold enough. Both fans came on. So the fans are running. Inside here is a relay pack. Then you have your interface on the front. Okay, so this is your interface. They're specific, so you make sure you got a freezer one for a freezer. It'll say refrigerator for refrigerator. Then it comes over. You'll see the back of it here. Get the camera in there. It fits in like that. 
that. Then you have your relay pack. This is your relay pack. And this is the signal going out to your compressor coil right here, 12 volts DC relay. That's your compressor relay right there. You get your defrost, your 120, your evaporator fans, 20 neutral and your defrost heater circuit. That's your relay pack. Compressor, contactor. These will stick a bunch. I've seen these things stick. Okay, there's codes to get into this control. There's a customer code and there's an engineering code. So your customer code is zero. Alpha one. And those are your parameters. Set point high, set point low. So let's see what our set point high is. Two degrees. Set point low, minus four degrees. Nomenclature tells me what they all are. One of these, either SD or DS, you can put it into a manual defrost. Probably this one right here. There it goes. You can set it into a manual defrost. Check the name, we can check the amp draw on the defrost heater. Should be the purple wire off the relay pack. Oh, I don't think it's going to focus. Right there, defrost. And coming out of that Molex connector is the purple wire. Right here. So let's get the amp probe on there and see what our amp probe is. Okay, we've got the purple wire. We've got the amp probe here. Sorry it's filming this way, but it's a really tight spot. So it's 8.4 amps. Our defrost heater is good. Okay, if you want to get to the engineering code, you go, you scroll it to ENG, you hit set, and I believe it's 9, 9, 9, Edward. set and the down button and then you get FOC block. Now you're into more settings on this control. You can get all crazy with it. But I wanted to show you guys how to get into this. Okay. So we checked a few things on here. We're all back up there. Nexus 7 tablet right here. I also have it in my iPhone, but I'm filming with my iPhone. Pressures look good. Here's my temperature probe. 17 and dropping. Let's see where it gets to. So now we're in a quagmire. We are working on a fridge that now looks normal. Coils clean, about fans are working. Relay pack, contactor, and some probes. Now, what only happens is that evaporators will grow. It's weird. That's the most common thing on these. So, this is their main freezer. I got to figure out a game plan, and I'm thinking the best I can do is offer up relay pack, contactor, and probe. And the other option would be just the probe and see how it goes. Let's see how we make out. Okay, so I'm over here, I've 
here at the truck. I talked to the customer. He's going to have me get him a new compressor relay relay pack and the sensor. I'm not going to worry about the interface. The interface seems to be okay. Um, I gave him all the options. That's what he wanted to do. I'm over here in the truck. Smart probes are still cranking. 105 condensing. Minus 26 evaporator. The temperature probe dropped out, but the pressure sensors are still catching and it's right over there through the fence. That's where the fridge is over there. Um, so that's one of those ones when you get on these jobs and you come out here, what do you do? You got to be proactive. You don't want to keep coming back. Um, you got to do something. So that's what we're going to do. So let me get this written up for the guy and uh, stay tuned for a follow up and we'll change the parts out. Okay, so I'm at 8 degrees of cooling. Okay, if you're wondering how I'm storing my smart probes, I get this little cheap Husky bag at uh, Home Depot. I put the Robin Air in there. And then I cram all these guys in there. That's the Tom Pal idea right there. Look at that, Tom. I, I watched and learned from your video. Get the little 45s for the smart probes. Whoop, whoop. Heads up. Thanks, bud. Um, so I get these guys in the little pouch. And then there they are in my tool bag. Let me zip that up real quick. Okay, and then there it is. Tool bag. Bang. You don't have to carry your gauges with you. Another cool thing about the uh, smart probes, yeah, they're Giants colors. Orange and black, baby, all the way. All right, that one there, that coil was iced up on there. The customer sent me a picture. And uh, <clears throat> you could see, the coil was iced up. And when I get there, it had been through its defrost and then the thing starts working again. So really, what can you do? I know the doors weren't left open on that one. They lock them up with the chain. So all you can do is try and get proactive. And if, they, if the customer wants to approach it, you can. If not, I mean, really, you're between a rock and a hard place. You'll see that a lot of this, this new equipment well, that's not new anymore. The IntelliTrol stuff's been out for a long time. But everything's going digital. And some of it's proprietary. I've seen TurboAir has their own electronics. Trollson has their own. True is using some different Dixtel thermostats. And they have their probes and sensors. So it's, it's fun times for the customers. So stay tuned, I'm going to get everything ordered up and we'll do a big old redo on this freezer for the guy. And thanks for watching.